All right. Hello, everyone. Cool. Yep. We can hear you and see you. Hello, Thanks, Samuel. Hello. Hello. Uh, it's been a long one year. What a while, right? Since the last one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I hope everybody is doing well, safe, healthy. Uh, all no right, Piero. Uh, shall and, I begin? Uh, uh, yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce, um, uh, introduce you. And Samuel um, is a graduate student at the Stanford University uh, Department of Aero and Astro and a member of the technical staff at DSO National Laboratories. Uh, he said the talk uh, in last year's uh, OSW on Orbit M, uh, which uh, is the orbit maintenance analysis software. And this year he's joining us to talk about cluster. I hope I'm pr pronouncing it correctly. Um, information flying design and visualization tool on Python. He enjoys making open source astrodynamics projects in Python, and while MATLAB could be nice, he strongly believes that Python is superior to MATLAB, which is great, so thank you, Samuel, for that. And Samuel, the floor is yours um, to explain to us what Cluster is about. All right, so thanks, everyone, for hosting me. Um, so Cluster is a part of a central part of a new series of projects and libraries that I, I'm writing in my spare time. Um, just because the notion of flying many spacecraft in space seems very, very difficult to the, uh, especially in a large um, satellite team where you have mechanical, electrical, thermal engineers, and not everybody knows the astrodynamics very well. So a visualization tool is always needed uh, as a mission designer. I think we've always spent more time explaining to people uh, how it works, uh, why it works and what it looks like rather than actually doing the uh, design work itself. So Cluster is a visualization tool for distributed space missions and the motivation. So right now most um, traditional astrodynamics softwares, SDK, GMAT, and uh, even if you do it on ORCID, um, you typically, you start with certain orbit elements. You have your Keplerian elements or your equinoctial Delaunay elements, and you propagate the orbits, um, do the heel frame transforms, and then you say, oh, that's what my relative orbit looks like. That's what uh, a deputy spacecraft looks like with respect to some chief. Um, what if I don't want to do that? What if I want, I don't want to design the orbit? What if I want to design the formation it directly without designing the orbit? So this is where cluster comes in. Um, it gives you the power to directly input what are the formation parameters, and then it solves for you the orbital elements that give you that formation. And of course, the whole point of it is a visualization, so then it just plots out this really nice plot on uh, matplotlib. So, um, next slide. So the, this is a lot of math, but it's basically a summary of it's like a two-page summary of the relative orbit elements. And what we would normally start with is our AEI, small omega, big omega, and your true anomaly. But in this case, what we're proposing is just start directly from how you want your... So this is the center of this diagram is your chief spacecraft. And this is your cross-track axis, your radial axis on the vertical and your in-track axis here. So what kind of formation, formations can we design if we, instead of specifying the orbit elements, I say, hey, okay, based on what the laws of physics and astrodynamics allows me to, um, what kind of formation, what kind of orbit will I get if I want to directly design what uh, R subscript R is, what R subscript N is, and what R subscript big R. Sorry, that's small, that's T, R, and N. So if I specify my spatial variation on the uh, output vector, can I work backwards and solve the inverse of this matrix to get back my orbital elements? And that's really what cluster is all about. Um, so some humble beginnings. Uh, let me see if one Louis is in the chat. Uh, Oh, I don't know if I can Monday, see him. Monday. Oh no, <laughs> I was about to give him a shout out. So uh, it started, um, I started prototyping a simple algorithm in PolyAstro. 
And in fact, if you, I think since Polyastro version 14.0, um, in the contributions folder, you'll see a custom class uh, that was written and it's called relative orb. So if you look at the Python code on the right side, all I did was in five steps. Uh, so you can actually plot a relative orbit in polyastro in five steps. Um, you, call the, you call two orbits, one for the chief satellite and one for the deputy satellite. So that's number one here and number two. Um, and this is just using the traditional polyastro tools that Juan Louis and his Juan Lu and his team have been building over the years, which is great and fantastic, by the way. I absolutely love polyastro. And in the third step, you call this custom relative orbits class, and you just call the propagate method, and then you call the plot method, and there you go, you get the shape of the relative orbit. So this is the this is starting with specifying the orbital elements we haven't actually specified the uh, formation geometry we wanted um, and so now we're going to work backwards and we're going to see whether we can do that or not and uh it turns out you can because it's uh it's you have six equations six unknowns you invert them if you invert them you get a closed form solution and this eventually became cluster so cluster you specify the orbital elements of your chief which is your origin where you want what's the what is the boss that you want your follower satellites to well follow right and then you tell the software oh how far apart do you want to follow the chief uh what is the amplitude in the radial direction in track direction cross track direction and you can angle the formation planes using these two angular parameters here and it just solves for you what kind of formations you can um it solves for you the deputy satellite's orbital elements, which that you can then plug in and use into your other astrodynamics software. So it's more like a visualization tool. Um, the GUI is like a friendly like starter, just to get uh, you to understand what's actually what what is visually happening when you run some of the libraries. And let's see what cluster can be used for. So at my work uh, back in Singapore, Cluster was used to design some future formation flying mission designs. Um, so we've got three in literature. You'll see that there's typically three classes of distributed satellite systems. Um, the one that we, there's one, so there's the pendulum formation and leader follower formation. So we're looking at two followers and the leader is this, uh, it's the one with the local hill frame axis. It's a bit small, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's like teal in color. So you have one light blue follower that's just kind of following behind. So normally these are just like, they're in the same orbit, but just like spaced. Um, there's some anomaly in between them. Then you have also pendulum formations where you have uh, two orbital planes that are just kind of like, they're crossed with some kind of, they cross each other with some angle could be an inclination or right angle of ascending node. And the resultant formation that you see is, uh, it just kind of moves back and forth, back and, and this is the cross track direction as it follows the chief. So you can do fancier things. Um, so the German Aerospace Center and uh, designed this formation for Terrasar X, Terrasar and Tandem X, where they use the a pure eccentricity vector separation and it creates this nice little ellipse or you can get fancier and uh, i think the university of toronto uh, space flight lab space flight dynamics lab um, they designed this really cool formation that kind of when it, you project it onto the surface of the earth so you can think like there's a it, it makes this funky elliptical shape that's kind of like bent but if you project it on the earth it's actually a almost it's a pure circle right so you can do uh, all kinds of uh, things that require consistent baselines because you can prescribe a triangle or a square within a circle and you can just make that formation geometry like really consistent you can do things like navigation or geolocation in disaster at times of disaster and things like that uh, lately, I've also been using cluster to make attitude control simple, or rather to import the use of cluster into attitude control. 
um, these are just some plots. And because of the way cluster it solves um, for your deputy orbit elements in closed form, um, you can actually use clusters libraries to generate random formations too. So this is like this is a bit of work in progress also. So this is a machine learning algorithm where I have a chief satellite and eight randomly distributed deputy satellites. So I randomly generated these orb, uh, the relative orbits, not the orbits, the relative orbits based on some bandwidth. I, I want it to stay within like maybe two to five kilometers away from the chief. Um, and, si and instead of trying to find what these formations are, I just solve for these formations directly and I just iterate like 1000 Monte Carlo trials. Uh, and it just kind of does some, and it can you and it uses uh, some reinforcement learning to learn a policy for how do you point? So how do you point to uh, all of the deputies in one of the in the shortest amount of time? So this is it's not a feature of the software. It's more of like what you can use the software to do, which is basically randomized generations of formations for your own experiments and purposes. Okay. Um, Right, so future work. Um, this is really exciting because I, I'm, I'm trying to develop uh, a whole suite of uh, distributed satellite missions, um, or rather mission software. Some future work for cluster itself. Right now it's still two body. Um, I'm building a numerical propagator that includes J2 for now and drag, but I'm hoping to extend it to full order geopotentials. Uh, I might need Numba for that. Um, and it's going to be part of a big library. I mean, maybe it might take like one or two years to finish, depending on how well I manage my time, uh, to basically do all forms of mission analysis for uh, advanced space missions, which is, um, in this case, distributed space missions are going to be the future, right? Um, so we're going to have common classes where you can integrate uh, cluster objects into, say, an attitude control simulation or into a machine learning library, for example. Um, and of course, the most important thing in any project, especially open source project, uh, documentation, right? So clusters not documented yet, uh, haven't found the, have not been able, I wanted to finish it by this year, um, still lacking a bit. And essentially, it's going to play a central role uh, in the orchestra formation flying library. So Cluster will be generating the formations. Compass, which used to be called Leo GPS. So Compass is now going to be the new relative navigation library in Python. Uh, Quadrant is the attitude control library. And Control is the relative orbit control in the ROE space. And uh, I think that's all for me. I, I'm not sure if I. Hopefully I didn't run over time, um, and I'll be happy to take questions. No, you're actually uh, right on time, uh, and um, that was a super interesting presentation, so thank you for that, Savio. Um, let's see if we have any, any questions on the chat. Um, Arthur is asking if there is a Jupyter Notebook or any other tutorial that can get you started easily. I suppose that this is different from pure documentation, right? Kind of like a walkthrough. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so a Jupyter Notebook is definitely going to be in the works, primarily because I think that's the fastest way people learn. Um, so yes, hopefully we can get a Jupyter Notebook embedded into the documentation. Uh, I have my, I, I'll be finishing my final exam today, so <laughs> hopefully I get some time to work on it for the rest of the year until the, until school reopens next quarter. Uh, but yes, that's a very good suggestion. I will take that, Jupyter Notebooks and tutorials. Ooh, cluster as a service. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure what an architecture for that would be, would be like. So would, that, would it be like, a, it's not very compute heavy. So actually in a, in your own local terminal, you may not actually need it as a service. You could actually just download it and run it off your uh, own computer. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm it's probably you, what just I'm before you came, I was muted. Can you hear me? Or? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. 
just just before you talk, I, I suggested an idea on a blockchain uh, to manage uh, services on, in orbit, and uh, thinking of uh, you know maybe you have spacecraft that can run cluster because they have the computing power, but others that don't. And mm. yeah, but they need you know to re compute orbits or to reorganize, so they could request that as a service. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I actually like I actually haven't seen like I haven't heard of it. so right now it's Python based, but I'd love to see like a spacecraft that actually runs Python <laughs> as a <laughs> like as a I don't know Raspberry Pi with a Pi, with Python yeah. operations. Yeah. That's the gonna be a. Future. That's really fast iteration. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope uh, if I find time uh, during my sleep, I'll contribute to that. That's, uh... Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Up in the loop. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, that's a really interesting blockchain idea, by the way. Thanks, Sammy. Um, and a final question uh, would be from Arthur. Um, whether uh, if there are any working demos of any other parts of the library like uh, Compass and Quadrant and uh, Control? Uh, that's a good question. No, but there will be. Um, so m ideally for every library, there's going to be full documentation and there's also going to be a uh, walkthrough Jupyter notebook where you can um, they tell you, oh, how do you call the formation class? How do you call an attitude control? How do you call an attitude object class? Uh, how do you call a relative orbit space object class in the control library, for example? Uh, yeah, I think we're having working demos is very important because just because you open, if you open source your code, it's not yet fully open source because it's very difficult for people to read and understand until you actually have a working demo and a, a, a at least you explain what what's going on in the code, right? Um, so yes, I totally agree. We I I will have working demos for it. Um, Hopefully, the first version will be out by sometime early next year to end of this year. Yeah, that's a great idea. Cool. All right. So, if there are no other uh, questions on the chat uh, for Samuel, I think that we can thank Samuel uh, once again for your talk. Thank you. Uh, that was super interesting. Thank um, you.